the only reason I went to a military college was because of this smoking hot senior. Okay. When I was a junior who I had a total crush on along with like half the other guys in the, in the class. And, uh, and she was accepted to the Naval Academy. So at the time, like I, I had barely started scratching the surface of like a college search, right? My family had told me I was going into the military. We have no money for college. You're going into the military or you're paying rent at 18. So, I mean, I'm clearly I'm going to the military. Yes. Well, now I find out that there's this military university called the Naval Academy. And this hot girl from my school is going to the Naval Academy. That must mean that the Naval Academy is full of hot chicks. So that's what took me to research military universities. And then I found out that there's other military universities, three other military universities. So now I'm like, I feel like I hit the gold mine. Four schools, all complete full ride scholarships, all guaranteed jobs as officers when you graduate, and clearly all full of hot, beautiful girls. So I applied to all of them and I got accepted to the Air Force Academy. Huh. Um, and, it, and then I found that the truth that there's not really a lot of hot girls. In the military <laughs> and if any girl is watching who's at the military academy, she probably agrees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so wait a minute, they, you go to school, they pay for all of it. And you're in, the, I, I don't, can you kind of explain that? Cause I don't understand that. Yeah. So the air force academy, the Marine, uh, I'm sorry, the air force academy, the Naval academy, West point, which is also known as the military academy mm-hmm. and then the coast guard academy. These are full, uh, full ride scholarships. Each is a military institution, and essentially, you you join the military the day you go to college at one of those four universities. It's a full ride, so they pay for everything. But you're also in the military. So while you're in that school, you're in uniform. You live a military life. You have a rank. Uh, you're eligible for you know service if the country goes to war. Uh, there's all the all the catches that go along with being military, but then there's also the benefits of a top tier education, um, you know, excellent accommodations. Everything is is really top notch. On top of that, it's hard to get in. Uh, each school only allows a thousand people per year, essentially, wow. to get in. It takes a congressional nomination from your state congressperson or a senator or the vice president of the United States. Um, you have to have very specific SAT scores, et cetera, et cetera. So, so by by finding out about them as a junior. And by having a mom who kept me on top of my grades, I was actually in a position where I had a chance to be competitive. And then it also helps to be the brown kid Ah. in a rural white school. Because guess what else was kicking in 1996? Affirmative action. Affirmative action was a real thing. So even though my GPA was like 3.8 and they didn't didn't allow anybody less than a 4.0, if you had the right shade of skin and a 3.8, you're in. So... Uh, Yeah. So it helped. Wow. Um, What are your thoughts about that? You know, the thing that I love about the United States is that the United States has always been a country that's based on equal opportunity, right? Equal opportunity. Now, frankly speaking, if I didn't get a 4.0, I can't compete with anybody else who didn't, who has a 4.0 if we're talking about fairness, right? If it's true equality then my 3.8 is empirically different than their 4.0. And this color of my skin and my personal experience and my background shouldn't play any factor in that, right? Now, what I think is happening, what I think our country has been struggling with for how long has it been now, 40 years? Yeah. Is the idea of how do you quickly shift social evolution so that we can actually have fairness and equality indifferent of our race and our ethnicity like how do we do that fast because we don't want to wait 200 years to do it we want to do it as soon as possible facts so then that's where policy and laws and experimental legislation come into play and now they're like oh well maybe if we just if we give more scholarships to inner city kids then that's going to accelerate the evolutionary cycle socially speaking of when white people and black people will see each other as equals or or how we'll shortcut our way through this awkward growth process. Um, unfortunately, just that's not the way humans work. So, yeah. so we can chase and we can fight that fight. And it's a noble fight for sure. Trying to make sure that, that women have equal pay to men, very noble fight. Trying to make sure that inner city kids have equal opportunity to, 
to, you know, uptown kids, very noble fight. These are all very, very noble fights. Unfortunately, the truth is one will always see the other as a threat and therefore they will never see each other as equals. As long as we're fighting the good fight, it's still a fight. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And no one is ever going to never, no one's ever going to accept the person across the aisle when they, when they know that they didn't have the same qualifications. It's one of the reasons I'm very open about the fact that I rode on the coattails of affirmative action. I'm telling you right now, it wasn't fair. I'm yeah. telling everybody watching and anybody who asks me, it's not fair. I should never have gotten into the, the Air Force Academy. Shouldn't have happened. I was an absolute basket case while I was there. I was a bad cadet. I didn't do well in college. I didn't do well with the rules. I didn't do well with the fact that it was a mostly Caucasian school. Again, I got, there's tons of stuff I didn't do well with, but I kept, they kept me there. They kept me there. My parents kept me there. Lack of options kept me there, right? Because they needed a certain number of brown kids to graduate. So I got like, you know what I mean? So I've been through this experience and I've, I've, I've traveled the world thanks to CIA and I've seen how it works outside of the United States. You know what every country is like outside of the United States? Fucking racist.